The American Dairy Association, the nation's dairy farmers, presents the Bob Hope Show, transcribed direct from Hollywood with Les Brown and his band of renown. For the American Dairy Association, whose dairy farmers produce the world's finest family of delicious, healthful foods, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Our guest star, Jerry Colonna. Our singing star, Margaret Whiting. And here he is, Bob Hope. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Here I am again for the American Dairy Association and their five million cows. You know, really, I consider myself the luckiest person in show business. Who else has five million sponsors who are very happy, very contented, and give milk, too? <laughs> now, just yesterday, the American Dairy Association took a group picture of all of their employees. It's easy to spot me. I'm the one who's standing on his hind legs. <laughs> And I'm so happy to be doing this show. You know, a lot of work goes into these shows, getting the guest stars, conferences with the writers, commercials, rehearsals. You've no idea how hard it is to do all that while you're sitting on a milking stool. <laughs> Actually, though, milking a cow isn't too complicated. You've just got to remember a few points. And it's been wonderful. <laughs> but it's been a wonderful season working for the American Dairy Association and their five million cows. They made me feel like one of the family. You know, the head of the American Dairy... <laughs> Head of the American Dairy Association says there's no drink like fresh milk, and he practices what he preaches. In his office, instead of a water cooler, he has a cow sitting in the corner. <laughs> and it's very easy to get a drink. You just walk up, say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo," and hold out paper cup under mo. <laughs> anyway, we're having a real summer weather out here in Los Angeles. Summer weather. In L.A., that means the smog is growing warmer. Smog is a haze that we have out here that makes everything look like early television. <laughs> In fact, it's getting so bad now, they may film Dragnet somewhere else. Sergeant friday has been searching for three days, and he still hasn't found last week's crook. <laughs> I saw him sneaking down the street yesterday, and the crook was following him. <laughs> and I want to tell you that everybody in the country and the world is thrilled about the new Salk anti-polio vaccine. It's a wonderful thing. And I understand they're now working on a vaccine that's even more amazing. It's guaranteed to make Mary Olanza sing. <laughs> now, I hear Mario's coming out with a new album. It's called Lanza Doesn't Sing Again. <laughs> it's on a long playing pizza. <laughs> there are a lot of theories as to why Lanza didn't go on at, in Las Vegas. Some people say he overdid his uh, dieting and his tonsils disappeared. But I happen to know the real inside story. Actually, Lanza didn't quit. Godfrey fired him. <laughs> Godfrey's still at it, you know. The other day he fired the network. <laughs> now imagine nine of them going at one time. The Godfrey show loses more people than the medic. <laughs> coming out with an entirely new show next week. It's called Arthur Godfrey and the Survivors. <laughs> and I see by the papers that King Farouk is looking for a job. At first, I couldn't believe it. How can he find time with all his hobbies? <laughs> I understand Egypt offered their former king a nice clean job with a big title. Grand General in charge of the hydraulic embellishment of national monuments. Washing pyramids. <laughs> he did get one legitimate offer, but then when they found out who was advertising, they withdrew it. They didn't think King Farouk was a suitable person for the job, night watchman at the YWCA. <laughs> of course, King Farouk isn't starving. He's still in good shape. Errol Flynn offered him 20000 for his address book. <laughs> Farouk order offered Errol 30000 for his, and I hope he gets something. <laughs> I hope he gets something soon because he's really broke. In fact, he's so broke he can't even pay his amusement tax. <laughs> and with Farouk, that could be tragic. You know that. <laughs> of course, out here, nobody's interested in working in television or radio or the movies anymore. Everybody wants to get into that new medium, Las Vegas. <laughs> Oh, I want to tell you, it's really fabulous. They're paying such huge salaries, you can earn enough working a week on the stage to spend 20 minutes at the roulette table. <laughs> and the big hotels would do anything to get movie names down there. They offered David Niven 50000 in his own suite, but he couldn't take it. He's married. 
<laughs> and they offered Clark Gable 50000 in his own bungalow, Sinatra 50000 in his own iron lung, <laughs> Lass, Lassie 50000 in a private tree. And I just had... <laughs> I've just had an offer to go to Las Vegas myself. Can you imagine a hotel being able to offer a comedian $60,000 a week? Well, can you imagine him offering me 30000 a week? 5000 Well, anyway, the bus fare's guaranteed. Thank you. You know, in desserts, like lots of other things, it's the good old-time favorites that are so often the best. Right, Ed Prentice? It certainly is, Bob. Now, take old-fashioned strawberry shortcake, for instance. You just can't beat the marvelous combination of fresh, juicy strawberries, tender shortcake biscuits, and pure, wholesome cream. Of course, you can use Bisquick to save time and for extra goodness mixed with cream. While the shortcakes are hot, be sure to spread on lots of gold and butter to brighten the flavor. Then add the crushed strawberries and finally the mellow goodness of real cream. Now there is truly a magnificent dessert. Old-fashioned strawberry shortcake. And it's the real cream that makes the difference. Don't forget that wonderful tasting cream, either whipped or plain, is especially rich in vitamin A and in the other important food values of milk. So enjoy lots of cream with strawberry shortcake this season. Cream adds the perfect flavor touch. Makes a fitting climax to any meal. Say, Bill. Yeah, Rob. Well, Bill, this is the last show of the season. You and the rest of the cast have done a great job, so I want to really show my appreciation. Oh, now, Bob, you don't have to go overboard. I don't have to go overboard? Well, of course not. Now, uh, how are you thinking of showing your appreciation, Rob? By saying thank you. <laughs> Gee, you didn't even dip your little tootsie in, did you? <laughs> now, don't jump to conclusions, White Fang. As a matter of fact, I have some nice presents for everyone in the cast. Really? What'd you get? Well, Les Brown and his musicians have done a wonderful job all season, and they went up to Greenland with me, so I got them $100 money clips. Well, gee, really, Bob? Yep, each money clip is guaranteed to hold $100. <laughs> if you fold it right. And I've got a nice present for you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. A week with all expenses at a hotel just outside of Las Vegas. Oh, gee, that's swell, Bob. Which one is it? The Desert Inn, Thunderbird, Sands, Sahara, New Frontier? No, this is a little further outside Las Vegas than any of those, Bill. It's called the Yucca Flats Motel. <laughs> Yucca Flats Motel? Well, I don't think I've ever heard of that place, Bob. Is it air-conditioned? No, but it may be by the time you get there. <laughs> You'll love it. The lobby is very exciting. You never know who's going to blow in. Hi, fellas. What's going on? Oh, we've just been discussing the fact that it's the end of the season, Maggie, our last show. Well, what about it? Well, what about it? Don't you feel any sentiment about uh, the sponsor or toward us? A wonderful sponsor? Well, Bob, of course I do. I'll never forget the American Dairy Association, or you either, Bob... Every time I stick my spoon into a blob of cottage cheese, I'll think of you. Thanks a heap. So this is your last radio show till fall. That's right, Maggie, but I'm still on television. I'm doing a TV show next Tuesday night over the NBC network with a lot of wonderful guests. Lloyd Nolan, the lovely French singing star, Lean Reno, Mario Lanza's agent, John Foster Dulles, Chiang Kai-shek... <laughs> And as a special added attraction, Winnie Ruth Judd, if she can get away. <laughs> well, after the TV shows, I suppose you'll take a vacation, huh? Yeah, well, my plans haven't quite crystallized yet, Bill. I can't decide whether to go motoring through Italy with Tyrone Power or yachting in the Mediterranean with Ava Gardner or grouse shooting in Scotland with Princess Margaret. Well, how'd you spend last summer, Bob? Slugging gophers in Death Valley with Gabby Hayes. <laughs> well, you know, the jackpot prize on Break the Bank isn't what it used to be. I'll get it. Hello? 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 <laughs> That's what I like about this show, sparkling dialogue. <laughs> well, it's Professor Colonna. <laughs> well. How are you tonight, Beaver Lip? <laughs> In the pink. In the pink? Yes, the blue ones are in the laundry. <laughs> it's a revival meeting, yes, sir. Now hold the phone a minute, Hope. Come here, honey. <laughs> oh, Professor. 
Sit on my knee. <laughs> Put your arms around my neck. <laughs> What's going on there, Kelowna? I'm conducting a scientific investigation. <laughs> oh, Professor. A scientific investigation? What are you trying to find out? What Lola wants. <laughs> in a fool's paradise. Okay, if I use your guest towels. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you ought to be here tonight as a special occasion. It is? That's right. I'm going off the air. You're going off the air? Yeah. What's the matter? How are you going to breathe? <laughs> Colonna, you're out of your mind. Yes, and I'm glad. It was getting kind of stuffy in there. <laughs> What are you going to do till we return in the fall, Professor? Oh, I'm starting my own program, Hope. Your own program? Who's on it? Oh, just me and uh, Gina Lola Brigida, Jaja Gabor, Lana Turner, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> going to be a warm summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelowna, you're doing a show with Gina Lola Brigida and Jaja Gabor and Lana Turner, Marilyn Monroe? That's right. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, old chap, but the answer is no. <laughs> no? We've got all the help we need. Well, that figures. Well, it sounds like a good show, Colonna. What's this? Who's the sponsor? No, no. What type of program is it? I don't know. What time are you on the air? No, no. Professor, you're doing a show with Gina and Marilyn and Lana and Jaja. You don't know anything about it. How can that be? I don't ask questions. I just have fun. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Say, Colonna, <laughs> don't let everyone know you come from a family of morons. Okay, Pop. <laughs> Look, Professor, I won't be seeing you for a while. This is goodbye. Well, I'll miss you, old pal. The sun in the sky won't shine with the same brightness while you're gone. The flowers in the fields will bow their pretty heads. The birds in the trees will sing a sad refrain. The dew of the morning will seem like tears. Even the winds of the desert will be stilled. Farewell, dear friend. Farewell. What a beautiful sentiment. Professor, I never knew you felt this way about me. I don't. I'm just moving my lips. That was a tape recording. <laughs> so long, Hope. So long, Broomhead. <laughs> Just for that, I won't throw any food in his cage tonight. Here she is, Margaret Whiting, backed up by Les Brown as gypsies, doing whatever Lola wants. Come in, Maggie. Whatever Lola wants. Make up your mind to have no regrets. Recline yourself, resign yourself, you're through. I always get what I aim for, and your heart and soul is what I. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Take off your coat, don't you know you can't win? You're no exception to the rule. I'm irresistible, you fool. Give in, give in. Whatever Lola wants. Recline yourself, resign yourself, you're through. I always get what I aim for, and your heart and soul is what I came for. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Take off your coat. Don't you know you can't win? You're no.
are no exceptions in the room. I'm irresistible, you fool. Give in, give out, give in. kid wants to send the will rights for <laughs> Ed Prentice, you were talking about cream with fresh strawberries a moment ago. I'd just like to say that I prefer my cream whipped. Well, lots of fun. Yes, sir, a snow cap of whipped cream cascading down over juicy red ripe berries looks gorgeous, tastes yeah. terrific. Oh, yeah. Most everybody agrees on that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the shortcake underneath those big, beautiful strawberries, you're smart to use Bisquick to get the real, for sure, old-fashioned kind. And as Bob said, top the whole elegant dessert with lots of cream. It's nature's finest topping, just as it comes from the cream bottle or when it's whipped to smooth perfection. Let whipped cream dress up other desserts for you, too, such as homemade sundaes, certain pies, or even leftover puddings. Just remember that cream makes the magic difference, transforms the simplest food into a superb treat. Add lots of wonderful flavor with real cream. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, like everyone else, comedians worry about holding on to their jobs, especially when it's the last show of the season, and they don't know if they're going to be back on the air in the fall. Now, even the world's most talented comedians worry a little bit. <laughs> Those with average talent worry a lot. And comedians with no talent at all... Oh, well, I think I'd better drop the subject, but you can imagine how Bob feels. <laughs> To give you an idea how worried Bob is, let's go back to this morning when he and I were walking along Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Come on, Bill. Gee, Bob, what are we doing in this ritzy shopping section? Well, you know, I haven't heard from NBC whether I'm going to be back in the air in the fall, so I thought I'd buy the president of the network a little gift. You know, sort of a reminder. A present. A token. The secret word for tonight is bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Steinway head. Don't ever faint when you're in the May Company, Bill. Those teeth look like an ivory escalator. <laughs> what kind of gift were you looking for, Rob? Well, the president of NBC, Pat Weaver, is a great outdoors man, so I thought he, he's a mountain boy, mm -hmm. and ever since he was a kid, he's loved the woods. Oh, he loves the woods, huh? Yeah, I killed him a bar when he was only three. <laughs> well, sir, in that case, why don't you give him your Davy Crockett coonskin cap? I can't. I loaned it to Crosby. He's going formal tonight. <laughs> Well, if you want a gift for an outdoor man, Rob, let's go in this store right here. The Beverly Hills Sporting Goods Shop. Okay. Ooh, gee, what a ritzy place. Hey, this is a very fine shop, Bill. Jeff Chandler wouldn't think of buying his poison arrows anywhere else. <laughs> I wonder if they have anything so crude as a clerk around here. Well, I'll ask that man over there in the cutaway coat and striped trousers. Pardon me. What can I do for you? <laughs> Are you the clerk? No, of course I'm not the clerk. I'm Winston Churchill. <laughs> now that I've retired from number 10 Downing Street, I'm spending the twilight of my career dusting out the holes in these bowling balls. <laughs> <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well, for one thing, you can stop getting such big laughs. No, what I want to tell you is, I want to get some sporting equipment. Do what kind? Well, I'm not quite sure. Let's see. Do you think some golf uh, clubs would be nice for a man who's a little overweight and needs some exercise? Oh, they'd be just dandy. Step right over here and I'll show you a set, chubby. <laughs> chubby? I haven't got an ounce of fat on me. I'm 170 pounds of solid flab. <laughs> you just step this way, please. Uh, Bob, are you sure that Pat Weaver likes golf? You know, I've heard he does a lot of fishing. He does it well, doesn't he? <laughs> Say, yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's an idea. Say, clerk, I'm buying a gift for a friend, and he's quite a fisherman. What would you suggest? Well, how about this fine aluminum fishing rod for $500? No, that's too much. Well, we have a glass fishing rod for $300, or a steel rod for $200. Look, uh, what can I get for about $10? A branch from a pussy willow tree with the pussy willow shaved off. <laughs> Never mind, we'll just browse around. We'll call you when we need you. Yeah, very well. But we have many small items here, the kind you can slip in your pocket. So let me warn you, there's a city ordinance against shoplifting. Now, wait a minute. Are you saying I'm a crook? I'm not saying anything. But I know one thing. 
you didn't get those mean, shifty little eyes counting marshmallows for the campfire girl. <laughs> Quiet, or I'll pull the string and your eyelashes will fall off. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, Rob. Let's look at this fishing tackle. There's some wonderful trout flies here. Yes, that one you're looking at happens to be a royal coachman now, trout now, fly. Now, whoop, 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 whoop. Pardon me. I think I know more about this than you do. That's a purple splendor trout fly, and it's not for mountain streams. It's for lake fishing. I happen to be an authority on fishing. I can believe it. You can? Yes. Your nose looks like it's swimming upstream to spawn. <laughs> that does it. Come on, Bill. We'll take our business somewhere else. Who wants their stuff anyway? And we have several items on sale at reduced prices. Well, you can keep it. I wouldn't take anything from this store if you were giving it away. You've insulted me, you've questioned my honesty, and you've ridiculed me. I'll never come in this store again as long as I live. Well, what an outburst. Sensitive little flower, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, you're back again. What is it this time? Would you please validate my parking ticket? <laughs> Good afternoon. This is the National Broadcasting Company. One moment, I'll connect you. National Broadcasting Company. Yes, Mr. Smith, here's your party. Hi, honey. Oh, hello, Mr. Hope. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to see the president of the network. The president? Yes, the end of the season. I haven't heard that I'm going to be back in the air in the fall. Oh, you don't have to worry, Mr. Hope. The big boss says you're the funniest comedian NBC ever had, and you get the biggest laughs of anybody in the business. He said that? When? Just this morning on the phone. He was trying to trade you to CBS for Jack Benny. <laughs> Jack Benny? He's no comic. He couldn't even get a laugh when he was working under the name of Evelyn and her magic violin. The president of CBS absolutely refused to do it. Trying to trade me for Jack Benny. That's like swapping Marilyn Monroe and getting Ma Kettle. <laughs> yeah, that's what the president of CBS said. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Look, just tell the big boss I'm here, will you? He's not busy. You can go right in. Thank you. Which way? Right through the store, Mr. Hope. Oh, hi, Mr. Weaver. Say, it's great to see you again. Oh, wait a minute. You're not Mr. Weaver. That is correct. Well, who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. You are in the presence of the wealthiest man in the universe, Hubert Updike III. <laughs> Well, you could have remained seated in your chair. Why do you stand up when you say your name? Out of respect. I'm in my presence, too. <laughs> well, I must be in the wrong office. I wanted to see the president of NBC. I am the president of NBC and the owner. Dear old dad bought it for me for my birthday. <laughs> your father bought you NBC for your birthday? Your, fa your family must really be loaded. Oh. We are. We have oodles and oodles and more oodles. We're so wealthy, we think Strike It Rich is a comedy show. <laughs> well, I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Updike. I have a present for you, too. Yes? Well, what is it? Uh, this bag of golf clubs. Oh, what a shame. I already have some. <laughs> Mater bought me a set of four golf clubs for Christmas. Only four clubs? Oh, they're beautiful ones. Three of them have swimming pools. <laughs> Yes, they're the best kind. Now, then you do play golf, huh? Oh, do I play? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I belong to the most exclusive golf club in the world, the Lakeside Country Club. It was very expensive to build. It has 18 holes. Yeah, well, all golf clubs have 18 holes. Indoors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I've seen the place. Howard Hughes has the washroom concession. Yes, I've seen <laughs> Well, you know, it, it's the most exclusive club in the entire world. We just had a very successful membership drive. Really? Yes, we drove out 300 <laughs> members. <laughs> you drove them out? Yes, yes, well, we had to, you see. Uh, several upstarts had managed to, to weasel in who only had three or four million dollars. <laughs> How sneaky can you get? <laughs> Imagine only three or four million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, you got to watch out for those wetbacks. Now, tell me, Hubert, <laughs> how did your family make all their money? Uh, oh, uh, in oil. <laughs> you see, we've, we've always been in oil. You've uh, seen that, that famous sign, the, the Flying Red Horse? Yes. 
Dad posed for it. <laughs> Dear old Dad is still digging for oil. <laughs> But he's getting very, very discouraged. He's getting discouraged? Why? Well, he keeps striking uranium. <laughs> well, some people are just born unlucky. Now, what's wrong with uranium? Well, nothing, nothing, except my family is very much against the atom bomb. <sighs> You're against the atom bomb? Why? Well, we understand it kills rich people, too. <laughs> and, and when dear old dad heard that, he wrote a letter to the government, we're calling off the test. You're calling off the test. How can you do that? We're taking back Nevada. <laughs> well, this has been very interesting, Hubert, and I'm glad you're the new owner of the network. I'll just leave these golf clubs, and I hope you'll keep me in mind when you need a comedian. No, 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 no. I'm afraid. I'm afraid you're too late. I've just hired a comedian. In fact, he's in the next office now. You've hired a comedian? Who is he? Oh, he's a very funny chap with bulging eyes, a high voice, and a big black mustache. Big black mustache? You don't mean... Oh, no, it can't be. Want to bet? <laughs> Colonna, you went behind my back and took my job away from me? Well, the salary's very good, and I thought... The Thief, th double-crosser, rat, viper, skunk. Keep going, you're getting warm. <laughs> Colonna, you're a low-down, despicable, crawling, two-faced snake in the grass. Please, Hope, that's no way to talk to a man who is suffering from an incurable disease. Oh, well, gee, I didn't know, Professor. You're suffering from an incurable disease? What is it? Poverty. <laughs> Well, that does it, you double-crosser I'm going to teach you a lesson Put up your hands No, 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 no Let's settle this like gentlemen There is no need for fisticuffs I'll flip this coin And the job goes to the winner Call it Heads Tails He got it, went out the window There it is Way down there on the sidewalk Oh, did it come up heads or tails, Colonna? I can't see Is it heads or tails? Lean out the window a little further, Hope well, I still can't see it. Lean out a little further. A little further. Just a teensy winsy bit further. Whoops. <laughs> what do you know? He came up tail. <laughs> hey, by the way, I hope a lot of you listeners have had a chance to try butter dip since we told you about them last week. This brand-new hot bread recipe created by Betty Crocker appears in May Ladies' Home Journal. Butter dips are easier than biscuits, better than rolls. They're dipped in real butter, baked in real butter. So make it a point to try this crispy, good hot bread right away. Golden brown butter dips. They're grand for guests. And even more than your guests, your family deserves real butter. Oh, thanks for the memory. To all our loyal friends on whom our show depends, you've been just great, we'd like to state, as now the season ends, that we thank you very much. April 27th, we'll be in the Las Vegas area. All you folks out there, we'll be at the Desert Inn for that big Damon Runyon Cancer Fund golf tournament with all the champions of the country. And I'll have my usual annual putting contest with Mr. Walter Winchell. I give him a handicap of two holes as usual. That's on April 27th. And May the 4th will be in Albuquerque with a lot of stars for the arthritis and rheumatism fund. And you folks around the Tucson area, be there May the 7th, the big show for the mental health hospital. And ladies and gentlemen, this is our last radio show for the season. I want to extend my sincere thanks to the American Dairy Association and the dairy farmers for making it all possible. My sincere thanks, too, to you at home for tuning us in every Thursday evening. It's been a wonderful association with a lot of grand people who've worked very hard to bring you these weekly sessions. Like our writers, Norman Sullivan and Charles Lee, announcer Bill Goodman, producer Jack Hope, engineers Johnny Pollock and Johnny Teal, sound man Parker Cannell, script girl Annie Wizen, NBC's Homer Welsh, and last but not least, our own Maggie Whiting and Les Brown and the band. Thanks from all of us for the memory of a grand season, and good night. The American Dairy Association, Nation's Dairy Farmers, are brought to you the Bob Hope Show. An NBC radio network production written by Norman Sullivan and Charles Lee, transcribed direct from Hollywood, California. Remember, never outgrow your need for milk. <laughs>